Connecting a tow vehicle to your RV can actually be a simple process. If you just follow the same steps every time, you'll develop muscle memory and it'll be just as smooth and easy as anything else you do. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is analyze your tow vehicle capacity in terms of how it can tow, whether it can tow, the process, and we're not gonna go into that today. I'm in particular towing an F-150 uh, pickup truck, but you may have a number of uh, different choices on your own. Of course, Jeep is a very popular choice as well, and each one of them has their own idiosyncrasies of how to hook up. But the basics are you need a tow bar, the connections to your vehicle, and uh, the best safety item would be, of course, having an auxiliary braking system. So I'm gonna go through what I actually use, and again, your mileage may vary. In particular, this is the actual Roadmaster. This has to be the Sterling all-terrain. Uh, it's a good fit for the F-150. So when you connect to the tow vehicle, there's a system called base plates, and every vehicle um, needs to have them. In particular, these are the Roadmaster receivers. You'll need your electrical connection port. And in the case of Roadmaster, this is the emergency braking that I'll discuss in a minute. And this is the air supply that feeds the Air Force One braking system. This is the Air Force One braking brain. And it's not real complicated. Um, it connects into the battery. It needs a vacuum supply. And it has some wiring that goes into your brake system. And it's not hard. A lot of people choose to mount this themselves. Um, I had a professional put it on just because of a couple of different things, but it's pretty well marked. You've got a vacuum line, air in, air out. Um, the electrical has to be grounded, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. I will say, though, like for F-150 users, you have to be really careful because there is a special adapter down there. Okay, it's a T fitting that goes right into the vacuum brake assist and you don't have to cut any vacuum lines. I need to stress this. The, the first installer that did this for me, he cut that vacuum line and it cost him 250 bucks to replace that. So what that Air Force One braking system does is it senses an air pressure from the RV. It pushes it into that brain. The brain then actuates a little pump, which runs an auxiliary air supply that actually runs a cylinder. It has an attachment to the brake pedal and just basically pushes the brake pedal down when it's activated. It also triggers your brake lamps too. Now, if your vehicle has movable brake pedals, it's imperative that those brake pedals move all the way back to pre-tension that cable up there. I choose to do that by programming the number three on my memory system. So what that does is that moves the pedals back and that way I don't have to think about it. So this process is really pretty simple. Even on a bad day, it takes me just a couple minutes to hook this up. So I'm gonna walk through this so you can see what I'm actually doing um, rather than rushing through it. You can get one of these little Husky bags from Home Depot and it keeps everything neat and secure all in one place. I just usually store this in the back seat of the truck and that way it's always right where I need it. I have my airline, my emergency brake tether, I have my tow hooks, and then I have my two tow pins. Okay, that's all there is to it. What I'll do is I'll take off my rubber protection tip and I'll stow it right in the bag. First thing we do, we connect in our receivers. It's a bayonet mount basically. It's a basically a quarter turn. So it goes in, seats, give it a quick twist. That locking pin has to seat in against the locking tab. Again, give them a good wiggle. The next thing I'll do is I'll open up the tow bar and I'll release the latch and I'll set bar on the ground. Now, one thing on these that they've improved over the years is this is a locking bar, all right? And what's nice about that is it gives some latitude when you move your 
vehicle forward, you don't have to be spot on. You know, back in the day when this thing was fixed, you have to be dead on to make that hook up. And then once you tow, this locks in place. This is the release for that mechanism. Makes it pretty slick. So you can get in the ballpark and look like a pro every time. These are linch pins. You have to make sure the linch pin, the bail on the linch pin will go over and around the end. If it does anything other than that, it's incorrect. I connect my safety cable hook. I step over to the other side. Connect my pin, put the linch pin in, and you'll watch the bail flip over just like that. Connect my safety cable. I take my electrical connection. It has a locating groove on the top that has to correspond on the truck. It goes in, and this flap actually provides a lock so that won't get yanked out. My airline goes from the coach to the truck. This feeds the Air Force One brake module. The last part of it is the emergency disconnect tether. What that does is if something were to happen and this all fell apart for some reason, which is pretty catastrophic, this will yank this pin. It's an electrical connection. It closes that contact. It sends a message to that brain in there and it'll actually engage the brakes so that your vehicle doesn't become a runaway and pass you on the median somewhere. But in normal usage, when the coach's brakes are applied through the air brake system, it pushes air into this, feeds that module with air, and that module then operates that solenoid in there basically, that actuator, and it pulls that cable down, it pulls the brake. It's a pretty slick system. And there's actually an LED indicator that's glued to the back of your rear view mirror that allows you to see it actuating from, in, in our case, from the rear view camera. So we're all connected. My last step that I do is before leaving this spot right here, I do a safety check. So I basically touch 12 points of connection along with jiggling others to make sure everything is sound and I haven't forgotten anything. I should go through 12 points of connection. So I'm gonna walk through it uh, and count as I go. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Looks great. Give it a quick jiggle. Make sure that my hitch receiver pin is locked in. Both of them, since there's an adapter here, uh, everything looks good. Now we're ready to go into the vehicle. And in the case of the F-150, we have to put it into neutral tow mode. So let's do that. The Ford F-150, this is a 2017, um, has been a super easy tow vehicle for us. I have found that the menu system is pretty straightforward. Um, it, it's just, it's not as easy as pulling a lever, but um, once you get that procedure down, it's pretty easy. This is a four wheel drive. So there's a big difference out there in terms of um, the mechanical system in which your vehicle is able to be flat towed. And the key word here is flat towed. So if you're not sure before you buy a vehicle or certainly before you tow your own vehicle that you have, um, check into it, look into the manual in general, there will be a flat towing uh, section if your vehicle is in fact capable of doing that. So again, this is a 2017 F-150, it happens to be a Raptor, um, and it's a four-wheel drive system, and I'm gonna show you the procedure in which I put the vehicle in a ready mode um, to be towed. So here we go. First thing is, I'm gonna start it. The next thing I do is I bring it into reverse, and I gently back up, and I get those front bars to connect. Now, I bring the vehicle into neutral and I turn on the accessory only. I'm gonna keep my foot on the brake here. In the F-150, you've got the advanced settings, vehicle, neutral toe. Your brake has to be pushed down. The vehicle has to be in neutral for you to meet the conditions to put it in a neutral toe. Then you push the okay and it'll initialize and i don't know if you heard it but you can actually hear the transmission click it'll verify neutral toe enabled leave transmission in neutral 
Now what I like to do is I put my air conditioning on recirculate and then I turn it off and I keep my radio off and that's that. The last step is kind of interesting. Now, since this is a push to start system, what you do is when you turn this vehicle off, you'll notice that the alarm comes up. What people don't understand is if you use the cursor and move it down to perimeter sensing and then hit OK, what that does is that turns off these noise and glass break sensors and you won't have your alarm going off as you're towing down the street. So once you get your vehicle all prepped and you leave and you make sure that alarm is set, you're ready to go. And if you wish to lock it up, you can lock it. And again, the glass break sensors won't cause your alarm to go off. There you have it. All in all, like I said, it only takes a few minutes once you get the system down, it's all done. Let's take a look.